You are listening to the INCJ podcast, conversations about international criminal justice. Welcome to number two in a series called the COVID Practitioner Challenge. I'm John Scott, and this is an INCJ podcast and YouTube. COVID-19 is presenting a unique challenge to frontline services not just in health and the social sector, but also in criminal justice. At INCJ, we wanted to find out how people working on the front line in prisons, probation, police, or with victims, were handling the issues around COVID-19. So we've started an international conversation with criminal justice workers to ask about their experience of the crisis. Our hope is that sharing answers will help find solutions and fresh ideas and highlights how practice will be changed in the longer term. Now, if you want to follow the series, you'll find it's on our website at criminaljusticenetwork.net or on Twitter at INTCJ Network. Now, let me introduce two prison staff from Slovenia. That's Katja Voch and Roman Oreshnik. Welcome, Katja and Roman. Now, tell us, first of all, where you're based. Where do you work? Um, We work at uh, Maribor Prison in uh, Maribor, which is the second largest city in Slovenia. Yes. And and, uh, what sort of a city is it? it, Is it an industrial city or what sort of city is it? Uh, I wouldn't say industrial it's it's a regular city, a little bit smaller than you probably used to. Um, we have uh, maybe Roman will tell something more. Yeah. <laughs> it was industrial, but, but uh, yeah. <laughs> as it was with those former uh, eastern countries, it uh, everything uh, sh- uh, slowly turns down uh, industrial wise. So we are more touristically interested. Uh, we have uh, the hill of Pohorje nearby with uh, skiing, uh, Golden Fox, uh, and those uh, competitions. And so, okay, and, and, and do you have lots of snow at the moment? No, uh, no. the hills are a little bit uh, white, but uh, it's not no, lately. It's, it's poor with snow. Okay, so how how big is the prison you work at, Katya? Uh, it's actually, it's the, I think it's the second biggest prison in Slovenia, but it's not that big because uh, uh, we have a capacity of uh, 140 people. So, yeah. And but what, for uh, Slovenia, this is, this is quite big, I think. Okay. Yeah. Now, you both got different jobs, so... Perhaps, uh, Roman, you tell us what job you do first, and then we'll ask Katya. Yes. Well, I'm a head of a Department of Work. Um, my job is to coordinate uh, uh, the staff of about 20 instructors uh, that uh, work with uh, prisoners, and they work uh, in fields of uh, keeping the house running. Plus, we have some... Uh, jobs that we do for other companies and we help them um, assemble some things and uh, we uh, have a think galvanizing and such uh, a bit of industry okay and katya what what role do you have in the prison uh, my role is called pedagogue uh, which is basically like a case manager uh, I got uh, assigned some uh, inmates when they come to the prison system, and then basically I guide them through the whole process. Um, we work with all different departments, uh, like, for example, Department of for Work, uh, uh, Safety Department. Um, our goal is basically to, um, to guide the, the inmates uh, back into the society, but... Uh, to guide him into the crime-free life. Uh, So we talk with them a lot about uh, their attitude towards the crime. Uh, We get to know them as much as possible, their family life, their background. Um, And in your prison, how many other people have the same job as you? I think right now there are six of us. 
six, and then we have also social worker and uh, psychologists and yeah, different so profiles. There's there's a mixed uh, group of staff yes, that run yes. the prison in my department, and of course there are other departments also. Yeah, and are, are there security staff, Roman, as well? Yes, uh, uh, from in security. I think it's about 70 uh, guards or security staff has. Yes. And, and they, they operate shift pattern and, yes, uh, and, yes, and yes. manage it through the week. Yes, okay. yes. Now, I'm interested to find out what your normal day is like, Roman. Well, my normal day, in my normal day, we, I have about two or three meetings uh, with other uh, heads of departments and with the director, we uh, discuss uh, the different things that are currently happening in our uh, prison, What, uh, where is our attention needed. Um, then I also have uh, to speak uh, with the uh, new inmates uh, and uh, find out with uh, department uh, of Katya's department uh, where we can find them to work because we uh, value very greatly their ability and willingness to work uh, as something to um, which is uh, recognized as something uh, with will and their willingness to come in society as normal people as productive uh, members of society so i have to help uh, find uh, their abilities uh, their willingness uh, in which department i can uh, offer them job and then also some technical stuff with the other other instructors. Uh, um, there are some issues that need to be addressed, and so it's a very diverse job. Yes. Do you have any placements outside the prison? Is all the work you provide inside the prison? Uh, no, we have. Well, it is inside the prison. Everything is inside the prison, but we have also two um, outer locations, two other locations, which are a bit smaller. Um, and uh, one of those locations also has uh, work uh, workplaces. And uh, this is also something I have to address. Okay, so you you have your hands full thinking yes. about lots, <laughs> lots of different sites yes. and then yes. lots of different types of work you have to provide. Yes, um, yes, because presumably some offenders are very able and have got lots of talents, and others are yes. are not so gifted. Yes, uh, those jobs are very different. Of course, uh, we have jobs uh, that we can offer and we are very happy to do this. Uh, also for two people that are not skilled at all, that are that never worked anything. And we are able to offer them some jobs that are simple enough uh, that they can show their willingness to, to try something and to focus on something and to endure in something. And we are very proud when we succeed with those people that, that, that can manage, they can actually show some results. Okay. Let's think about Katya. Uh, what's the shape of your normal day? Uh, it's a normal day. It's, every day is very different, I think. Uh, for me, at first I come to work, I check my, for example, my emails, the reports from previous day or from the weekend. And then it all, all depends what's happening with the inmates. Uh, so, yes, we have some scheduled meetings every week, but uh, from day to day, it's very diverse. So we get some messages from uh, inmates that, for example, they want to talk with me or uh, something happens and I go and uh, try to, I don't know, provide them with some information, help them, advise them. Um, and also it's a lot of uh, collaboration between different uh, staff also. We have to talk with each other, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, and do you uh, have privacy and space to talk to uh, people in the prison so that they're not overheard? Yes, we have, uh, we have special rooms. Uh, we can take an uh, inmate with us and then we can, we can talk in private, of course. Yes. This is, I think, very important uh, also for the inmates. Yeah, okay. Um, 
What I'm going to move on to, to is to ask a little bit about what the main impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has been uh, on the lives of the prisoners over the past year, because uh, many of the people listening to this uh, broadcast uh, maybe talked about being locked down, which is a a prison phrase, isn't it? But they've been locked down in the comfort of their homes. And we've been asking uh, people in prisons what it's been like to experience COVID whilst they're in a prison setting. So maybe we could ask you, Katia, first, have prisoners found this a particularly hard time to be in prison? Uh, I think, yes, especially because uh, the visits were... um, At first, we started having visits uh, between the uh, class. Uh, So it was... It was hard because you weren't able to touch the person that was sitting next to you, to hug your kids, uh, everything. And then at that one moment, we actually uh, canceled all the visits. So uh, we tried to find different ways to uh, help the inmates to talk with their families. Like uh, we gave them some uh, free telephone cards. Uh, we launched some Skype visits uh, so they can talk like we are talking now. Uh, but I don't think this is the same and i think this was the hardest part for them uh, not a- being able to see their families to talk with them yeah and what was the impact on the prisoners of being cut off from their families like this i think they were concerned what was happening at home uh, uh, and also this feeling of not being able to help this was really stressful situation for us all and uh, they weren't able able to go home to help their families. Maybe somebody was uh, out of job, somebody was having problems because children were at home. So yeah, it was frustrating. So we have to we had to like talk with them a lot about uh, their families and the problems. Yeah. Did this Roman? Did this spill over into uh, the prisoners in the work setting? Yes, of course. Uh, we have a very uh, big impact uh, in work setting. Uh, we actually, a lot of uh, prisoners that were better situated, that were better, uh, that were not so, com- <laughs> how should I say it, uh, that had easier sentences, let's say. They, they were able to uh, go uh, and uh, put their sentences on pause. They were let home. Uh, so really we're at once with half stuff than we had before. We have 30 more, pardon, 30 less uh, prisoners that could work uh, than we have before. So we have to um, shut down all those unnecessary uh, business uh, workplaces. So we have uh, left only with uh, uh, work that was needed for functioning of the house. So we had laundry, kitchen, and those uh, things. This was at the beginning very, very difficult because uh, other jobs also have uh, orders and everything will need to be met. Uh, and we have uh, about a two month period that we couldn't uh, produce anything that was for the outer society. And did that put pressure on your relationship with the other companies that you supply services yes, to? Yes, yes, uh, yes, of course. Uh, they were sympathetic at first, uh, but after uh, one or two months, they were uh, asking if we could not uh, establish this production again, that they, could, they would have to turn other ways. So it was very difficult. We, but we uh, wouldn't want to lose this uh, because then we have nothing to offer to our inmates to work. They are also very keen to work. At some, at least half of them uh, would wouldn't know what to do in with themselves if they this option would taken away from them. Because those jobs feel like real productive jobs. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. It means uh, very much to them. You can see uh, we have uh, uh, Lori uh, 
one in two weeks one once in two weeks uh, that is filled with their products and goes uh, out <laughs> and you can see the proud in their eyes when they see what have they put together and that this stuff is needed that it's not something that just so they are busy no? mm. uh, it, it yes they mean it this work means uh, a lot to them okay so how did you get did you, how did you manage to keep those relationships with the outside companies going well we uh, in house we managed to agree uh, in uh, which way should we organize ourselves so this uh, work can be uh, managed again so that we could work and so we managed to organize ourselves so that uh, we have uh, floors and we have uh, separated our house in some floors we have a floor with those that don't work and we have a floor with those that work so if in case of pandemics we have a outbreak in the house we can separate and we can contain the spread of virus so and this way we could, we were able to continue to work okay perhaps we could switch back to katia now um what changes did you have to make in the way you worked because of covid uh first of all like uh, obvious ones uh, wearing face masks uh, then uh, keeping the distance uh, uh then also some not some but all group activities was cancelled uh, during the fact that we shouldn't uh, have like too much people in one room uh, so we had to like uh, provide uh, inmates with di- di- other free time activities we have to adapt a little bit um, we had some chess tournaments uh, some art workshops but in in smaller groups uh, also every pedagogue has a group every week with all um, of his inmates this was also cancelled and all the people that come from outside into our facility uh, to work for example like with uh, people that have problems with addiction this was also all all cancelled so this was we have to quite uh, change the way we work and with those services just stopping does it mean that things like a, a drug problem just stopped being addressed uh no we also have the the groups uh, that are led by our uh, pedagogues and we also do of course individual work but it's much better if you have different uh, people working with them of course so it's i think it's a shame that this has to stop but we are now uh launching it again so i hope soon it will be back to normal Okay. Yeah. If I if I asked you what do you think the biggest challenges have been for prison staff in Slovenia over the last year? What what would you say? Let's start with Roman. What do you think the biggest challenges have been? Well, uh, we had um uh, we did some things when we had uh virus in house we have uh, two or three cases uh, we agreed to test uh, all staff uh, with those uh, fast test uh, to see if uh, anyone is also positive without uh, showing symptoms so this was a weekly procedure it was not taken very well by everyone um, i don't know uh, we have some issues with uh, i have a right not to be poked in nose uh, every week and so there was there was some of that but i don't know those masks are also um, pretty hard on people you, they, some can breathe uh, beneath them i don't know uh, meetings also yes they are held at uh, distance uh, with open windows uh, Yeah, it's little things and a few bigger. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, we'll perhaps come to the bigger things in a moment. Katia, what would you say the biggest challenges were for your you and your colleagues? Uh, like Roman already said, uh, the meetings we didn't really know how to do these uh, meetings with all the departments together. 
we tried not to have them and have them over the computer, but it didn't really work because I think it's important that we see each other and we talk and share ideas and stuff like that. Uh, so this was quite challenging. Uh, and also, of course, working with inmates, uh, we were advised not to see them, uh, if not really important, but for them, a lot of things, basically everything is important. So uh, as the lockdown began, I think they they have been writing even more to, to talk with us uh, because they had some problems at home or stuff like that. So balancing this out, uh, to try to keep them safe, to, uh, for example, see them as, uh, don't see them as much as before, but I don't think it was really possible uh, to do this. So we have to search for some middle way. Yes, and, and if you are tense and worried about your family, yes. lots of those tensions then are acted out in the prison, aren't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah. And and have has have there have there been more um, problems and fights or disagreements in in the prison? This this is quite hard to answer because I think the security department is maybe more in sync with that. Uh, but yeah, I think of course, probably See, yeah. Things have been a bit more volatile. And understandably, yes. if you feel mm-hmm. cut off, that's that, that's that's going to happen. Um, let's move on and perhaps look at a bit at those at the bigger picture, because uh, for the Slovenia prison service as a whole, um, the worries about testing, uh, outbreaks, uh, like every uh, system, or whether it be schools or uh, social services, the prison service has got to move very quickly. What do you think the biggest problems that they've faced have been? I don't know. Uh, I don't think it was uh, any clear strategy. Uh, you should do this, you should do that. Uh, it was kind of a left off to individual prisons uh, to act more or less uh, as they see fit. It was also by some law, I don't, I can't uh, quote on this, but uh, it put uh, power to directors as prisoners, as uh, home for older people and such, to for quicker reactions, to be able to quickly react to situations, to be able to decide themselves how to address some things. But I think it uh, left uh, a lot unsaid about how to do uh, some things. So individual prison governors yes, were yes, left yes. to make a lot yes. of the decisions. Yes, I, so I think, I think it was uh, like that. Okay. Um, what about your view, Katia? What do you think the, the biggest problems for the service as a whole have been? I agree. I think it was everything was changing really fast. Mm. So we didn't have a lot of time to make, I don't know, a plan. Uh, so everybody in the system, I think, had to adapt really quickly. This was a new situation. And uh, I also think maybe just if I look at my profile, um, maybe some supervision, some uh, educational seminars, everything was put on hold for a uh, uh, for this time, uh, maybe we had we have something uh, via audio video system, but I don't think this is quite the same as meeting in person. Yes, it's it's, it's very hard, isn't it? Because um, everything's moving very fast. Do you feel that at your level in in the prison, people have worked together as a team to do their best? Yes, yes, I think we are a really good team in our prison. And I think now maybe Corona showed us uh, how important this really is because uh, it's the type of work that you cannot be an individual. You have to communicate every day with everybody because uh, you are not just, you are not the only one that works with the inmate. And if we don't talk and we are not connected, then we can't really do our work, I think. And your managers in your prison uh, are in the same environment as you they're having to 
make decisions day by day, are they not? And, yes, yes. Uh, and did they talk to the people on the ground about the best things to do each day? Yes, I think they did. Uh, we have uh, every week we have a meeting where we all uh, sit down and we talk about the issues. And I think we have a uh, management that really uh, hears us out. So they take our ideas into the consideration. Yeah. That's impressive. Roman, I, I want to change uh, the discussion a little bit and ask if okay. prisoners have brought you worries. Have they shared their concerns with you directly as they've been working? Yes, um, I have to say I've noticed that they are uh, scared of these situations uh, for themselves uh, in uh, prison if the outbreak come in, comes in, as for their families outside. Um, many of those uh, inmates are not in the best of health. They all have some problems, addictions and anything else. They know they are vulnerable to this thing. It may have serious consequences if uh, they are exposed to it. Uh, and I also can say when we stop uh, work in this uh, production part, uh, there were a lot of them asking if when can they start work again. And so they were very, very eager to, to come back to work and to, to normal, some normal routine. So yes, uh, it was a big impact on them, you could see. Mm. Katia, uh, as a as a case manager, um, do you think prisoners realized that they had someone they could talk to about their worries? Uh, yes, I, I think they do. They also uh, have the ability to talk with uh, prison officers. I think they're connected to them too. And uh, I think we, at the beginning, when we get a new inmate, we have like this assessment interview, for example, something like that. And I think every pedagogue uh, informs them who they have, uh, that we can talk with them, that they can talk with psychiatrists if they need it, and stuff like that. They know where to seek help. Mm. We've mentioned families already. Um, do you think that video connections with families will be sustained in the long run? Will family visits be overtaken by video contacts? Uh, we actually already started having uh, visits again, uh, but behind the glass. Uh, but I hope that maybe this Skype uh, thing will be, um, that we will uh, still have it because we have a lot of foreigners in our prison from all over the Europe. And it's basically impossible for their families, like for example, from Ukraine to come to visit for one hour. So I think maybe this, maybe this is something good from Corona that we will maybe uh, continue with this practice, at least for foreigners. Okay. And so therefore uh, integrate both uh, video contacts and... Yes. Uh, physical visits, yeah. Uh, are there any other examples of new ways of working that should be developed or sustained? No. But... That's a good one. Do you, yeah. Roman, anything new that's happened that you would like to see continued? I don't know. Uh, I haven't noticed uh, nothing so... Uh... Good, that was a new. Uh, we have tightened some uh, security at work. Uh, we, we have to announce any, every uh, entrance uh, for work purpose uh, in house. Uh, this was uh, also practice already, but now it is on another level, uh, even higher. Uh, I don't know, uh, not so many. We have uh, already had anything, everything uh, quite organized. Okay. So this was not all. What do you think the prisons learned from the pandemic experience? I, don't, uh, I think uh, 
we learned how important uh, is uh, to have uh, inmates capable of working in a big enough number. So the work, uh, the house can work, uh, so everything can survive <laughs> in the form that is uh, useful for us and for them. Uh, that we have to work together, communicate a lot, a lot. Uh, in a few uh, instances, uh, it was uh, shown to us that uh, the communication was not good enough and it was brought to our attention, so we have to address it and uh, it is better now. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, we have to communicate a lot, um, even more than we think we have. <laughs> okay, that's really interesting. So what you're saying is to reinforce good practice and the value of work and yes, that's yes. really come, come home through the, the crisis. What about you, Katia? What do you think the prison has learned from the pandemic? Um, I think maybe that uh, we are very dependent on each other, uh, different uh, departments, uh, and also co-workers, because when maybe somebody was sick and um, him or she wasn't uh, at the work, we saw that uh, every piece is very really important to to make the whole service uh, great. So maybe that. Okay. I'm going to change the, the, the direction completely now and perhaps ask you to reflect as people uh, what uh, this last year has been like. And first of all, although this is a strange question to ask people who work in a prison, how do you escape, if that's the right word, from the pressures of being in prison? Katia, what do you do to escape from prison? So uh, escape, I, I don't really <laughs> think that I have to escape, but I, I know what you mean. Uh, sometimes you have to, uh, yeah, when you come home, just forget a little bit about the job. I don't know, I, I listen to music, I go for a walk or for a run. Just, yeah. So. Perhaps unwind is then a better word yes, than escape. Yes. <laughs> what, 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 Roman, what do you do to unwind? Oh, I have many hobbies. Uh, for most of them, I don't find time. But uh, last year, uh, it took uh, the worst for my... Uh, I'm sailplane pilot uh, and I fly uh, in sailplanes in local aero club. Uh, and last year, it was not my the greatest year. I only flew a few hours. So for this year, I have a plan to up this number a lot. <laughs> okay. So real new priority to make sure you do more flying. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Has anything over the last year made you rethink your approach to work, Katia? Hmm. Uh, not really. Maybe just uh, my may just beca became a little bit more grateful that I still have this ability to work with people every day uh, because, yeah. But I didn't really change uh, my approach. I, I just, actually this year, uh, 2020 was the year that I started working. So I, I, I just started working maybe a month or two and then the corona hit. So Okay. Yeah. So being thankful. Well, yeah. uh, in, in English, we have a phrase called counting your blessings. Yeah. Um, so, so if you start your career doing that, you maybe uh, keep doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, 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 what about you, uh, Roman? Well, I think uh, I've noticed or I uh, came to recognize I have to be connected to uh, people in my department more. Uh, I think they've on occasion they find themselves left behind, not hurt. Or I think I have to talk to them more. This is the uh, main thing, I think. We hear ourselves uh, mostly when there are some trouble. Uh, they, they call or I check on them. But I think uh, we have to communicate a lot more. So, so not not just when there's a problem. Yes, but yes, yes, as yes. Part of being in touch in uh, when things are going yes. well as well. Yes, yes, yes. 
Okay. Uh, many things, many things come out when you talk uh, just so casually and uh, think pop into mind. Uh, yeah, this is another thing we have to say, and it's not just those uh, that are most acute. <laughs> mm. Do you think lockdowns changed you as people in any way? I don't. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Well, you, you, I don't think yes, uh, I, I'm changed a lot. Um, I believe I uh, will cherish more uh, those small things when you are free to do anything you want, uh, to meet with any, anybody uh, anywhere. Uh, this is for certain, but uh, other than this, I don't know. <laughs> cherish small things. That sounds like a, yeah. a, a good thing. What about you, Katya? No, I don't think so. As a person, maybe just uh, the fact that uh, you can't really control anything, that things can happen over the night and just everything can change. So maybe I, I realized this a little bit more uh, firsthand. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. You and uh, uh, and is it about seven billion other people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is. A, it's a good lesson to learn. Now, I've been asking you loads of questions, and one of the things I've said to people uh, is, do you have any questions that you can throw back at me to uh, to, to turn the tables? So, uh, I don't know if you want to ask me anything that, uh, about this subject. Do you want to throw a question back at me? Yes, I think Katya had some uh, one question already. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> we spoke. <laughs> it, yeah. it's, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's probably going to be a killer question, I can tell uh, Katya. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm just, you worked in this field of work for a long time in different uh, yeah. different jobs. Uh, I, maybe what did you do to escape or to uh, forget about work? What, what, what's your advice? Okay, I had four kids. And oh. uh, they they never let me forget that uh, they were more important than anything else. <laughs> so, um, so uh, I think um, I was always I always reckoned I had one real gift, and that was that I could sleep. So I never lost any sleep through work, which was lucky. I could always sleep, so I felt I woke up with renewed energy. But to be serious for a moment, I think that that. that People talk a lot, don't they, about the balance between work and, you know, out of work life. And one of the things that um, having uh, a family meant that um, I really did need to make sure that I shared lots of their important life experiences. And um, I think some, although I was, you know, had lots of other interests, I'm quite keen on sport and theatre, but I shared lots of things with my children. And so my interest with them meant that I was uh, forced to make sure that I had plenty of outside interests as well. So uh, I think that's how I um, kept this sort of balance. Um, whether they exhausted me as well is another is, is, is a topic for another question. But I think that's probably um, how, how I managed to survive. Um, but the but the, the other thing is that I think it's probably true to say is that if you can somehow um, really, f while you're at work, if you can really focus on work and then find a way of switching off, I think that's, that was one of the secrets that I, I think I probably got from my mother and father who both had quite big jobs. But when they came home, they were really at home. And that's what I tried to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was a bit self-revelationary -revel there. So uh, we'll, we'll cut that out of the final recording. <laughs> no, 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 no. Promise, promise we won't. Okay. So we're, we're coming towards the end now. And thanks for, you know, for being so sort of straight and, uh, uh, and, and answering so many different questions. What I want to fi finish off with is saying, well, do you have any COVID-19 advice for your colleagues, your criminal justice worker colleagues around the world so should we start with Roman? Do you, do you do you have any advice that you would like to share with any of your prison service colleagues i don't know uh perhaps find some hobby to practice at home <laughs> I don't know. start flying 
I think that's <laughs> yeah, this is a big um, maybe my, my other hobby uh, buy a guitar and to learn to play something <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I have a guitar in the corner of my study which oh. I haven't opened for months <laughs> so I'm, I'm clearly failing there. so right that's one piece of advice Katia what's your advice for your colleagues um Maybe take this as the opportunity to, um, I don't know, to, like you said, uh, have time, time with your family if you have the opportunity to be with them. And uh, maybe also to, uh, I think we all experience this year how is to, to lose a freedom a little bit. So for our line of work, this can also be an uh, opportunity to understand maybe the inmates a little bit better. And on that note, I think we're going to sign off. That's a very powerful last thought. And I want to thank everybody for listening. Um, I want to say stay safe and hope you can join us next time, whether it be on a podcast or on a YouTube. I want to say thank you very much to Katia and Roman. And to say uh, that you can find our podcasts available on your normal provider, whether it be iTunes or Google and under the INCJ podcast label. And so to everybody out there, goodbye and thank you for listening. You have been listening to the INCJ podcast, conversations about international criminal justice. To find out more, go to our website at criminaljusticenetwork.net or follow us on Twitter at INTCJ Network.